Okay, welcome guys to Podnuts Daily for June 11th, 2008. Uh, third video podcast this week. Working out the glitches as we go along, but I think it's going pretty good. Okay, first computer I worked on today is a computer that um, a customer brought in. Now, it's a two-part story here. I want to talk about the customer and I want to talk about the computer because both of them can offer some good advice to, um, to a computer repair guy. First off, the computer. He was complaining that when he put a disc in the drive, his CD drive or DVD drive, nothing happened. Now, because the, he wasn't great with computers, he didn't know that. Um, sometimes when you put a disc in the drive and nothing happens, you just got to go in manually to my computer and you know click on the drive or, or do something manually. But he was used to auto that autoplay option, and that's what that's called. Where you put the disc in the drive, it pulls up a little menu, Wizards and Windows XP and, and Vista. It pulls up a little menu. It says, what do you want to do with the disc? And depending on what programs you have installed, it gives you options on what to do with the disc. Well, his wasn't happening. So I'm like, oh, that's a piece of cake. If you uh, go into my computer and right-click on the drive, you can set the autoplay options. Except they were all set properly. So it was a mystery why he was not getting that window. Um... I had to go on the internet, do a Google search, and on autoplay is what I did, and I did some research, and I found out um, a, a fix where you actually had to go into the registry and change some settings in the registry. I'll put that fix in the show notes because it's a little too complicated to talk you through, but um, miraculously that worked. Thank God. Now, there's also a tool that I think Microsoft offers called Autoplay Repair, and you have to run that, and that might do the same thing. I didn't run the tool. I just went straight into the registry, and, and that fixed it. So Autoplay. Uh, that was the first thing. Second thing is about this customer. This customer is a customer I've probably done about three repairs in in the past. Now, I don't talk much about customers, but this is important. Customers... Um, can make well they make or break your business see like this is one of those customers that loves to waste time he he'll he'll sit there with you and talk to you as if he's your buddy not realizing that you're on the clock and you're working on his computer and you need to make money off of that so he'll sit there and and kind of bug you and 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 you're, you're going to be able to notice these people and I recommend you know you just you you handle them a certain way. They're the kind of people that they must be kind of lonely in their personal life. Don't have too many f friends around. So either make up problems with their computer or actually have a problem that probably they could solve on their own, but want to take it to you because they're just bored and and want something to do. So they take it to you and then they want to sit there and talk to you all day about it or help you fix it or or, or this and that and. It adds up in time, and, and, and for somebody who's in the business, you know, I like customers, and I like people, but he has to realize that I'm not doing this for fun. Well, I, I am, but I'm doing it, it's my job, and I need to finish jobs, and I can't sit around talking about his computer forever. Um, he's also the kind of person, and this might fit that, that certain personality, he's also the kind of person that doesn't want to pay full price ever. You tell him it's 79, he's like, oh, really? I mean, all you got to do is blah, 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 and he tries to talk you down in price. Um, and then here's so that's another characteristic of this type of customer. The worst part is after you do fix it, he'll take the computer home and then call you up and say, "Now this isn't working," or the thing you just did it's not working, or some setting isn't fixed. And he'll either bring the computer back to you with no problem. He doesn't have a problem bringing the computer back because, like I said, he's bored. Or he'll have you. You have to walk him through it over the phone. Anyway, it's that kind of customer. Probably if you've been in the business for at least a year, you've maybe not even that long, you know that there's customers out there like that. You've got to just um, not, not cater to their, to their every whim and not spend a lot of time on their machines because it's going to sink you. Um, just, I'm not saying anything you should treat your customers badly at all. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the customers that are there to waste your time and they do it on purpose most of the time, whether they know it consciously or not, they actually are doing it on purpose, eating up your time, eating up your day, and you just got to gotta handle those, those people in, in the way that I, I guess a businessman would and say, look, I haven't a couple, just be straightforward and say, look, I got a couple other jobs to do. I really can't do this right now, politely. Or um, if they're just too bad where, where um, 
they don't take your hints. They don't listen to you. Maybe tell them, look, I can't fix your computer anymore. And maybe you could just be right up front with a reason or, or be having uh, some kind of excuse about it. And just kind of get them off the lines because they're just going to eat up all your time. Okay, that was um, a two-part thing on, on the computer, his computer and him as a person. Nice guy, but, you know, I'm not there to uh, talk about golf all day. Okay, um, i got to refresh my memory here, guys, because I don't know what the next job was I did today. In the chat room there, can you guys hear me okay and see everything okay? Thanks. Okay. All right, I'm thinking of the other job. Here it is. Had a computer come in today. It was an HP desktop. It might have been a fluke, but the customer was complaining that um, it ran slow. But And he also had a problem with his power button. power button was, was actually falling off the machine, but that was just a mechanical fix. But about the computer running slow, we fixed the power button, then plugged his computer in, um, plug the power cord in and hit the button and the uh, and actually we didn't even hit the button we plug the computer in and you're going to have computers like this and when you plug the power cord into the computer the computer goes on automatically before you even hit the power button on the actual front of the machine a lot of times it's these computers are a little flaky because the computer should not go on when you plug the power and they should go on when you press the power button um, anyway this computer was doing that and we had just blown compressed air in, on, into the hole inside of the computer to try to get all the dust out. And maybe that shook something up that it shouldn't have. So we kept, checked all the connections, did the same thing. We put, we, we put the um, power cord in, and the computer just um, started up. But it didn't post. It didn't boot. It didn't do anything. It just kept – the fan started running and just kept going. So what it ended up being actually was we pulled I, I pulled the CMOS battery out of the – off the motherboard. And here's what you do. If you're having – problems that you think might be BIOS related, check this out. Unplug the power from the computer, first of all. Never get in there while the, the power is on. Pull out the CMOS battery, then press the power button on the front of the machine to, to uh, discharge any charge that's in the motherboard. Then there's a jumper setting on the motherboard usually that says clear CMOS. Take that jumper, flip it over to where it, it's usually three prongs, that, that jumper setting. Take the jumper, move it from the two prongs it's on to the two next to it, hold it there, and it pull it back and then put the battery back in put the power cord in the the back of the power supply turn it on and that might handle a problem with your bios it kind of does like a little bios reset and in this case it actually did fix the problem the computer actually posted and booted we had to reset the time and date in the bios but um that problem was averted